The 1980s were filled with some of the most unique and awesome personal computers ever. I mean, truly, truly glorious, funky, and weird. And some of them, unfortunately, just don't get remembered as well as they should. Some of them were commercial flops. Some of them were absolute disasters. But because of their awesomeness, their uniqueness, their weirdness, they deserve to be remembered. Such is the Hallborn computers. I'm going to read an article to you now with lots and lots of pictures because these computers are amazing. I mean amazing. A massive, massive non-success. <laughs> they flopped. The company's gone. But the computers are just so weird and just so cool that we need to talk about these. Uh, I'm going to read the article to you now because, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Between 1980 and 1983, a little company in the Netherlands built the Hallborn series of computers, which, which can be best described as 1950s sci-fi powered by a Z80 processor. Uh, now, I want to make the note of this because the name Hallborn is to signify that these computers were born in Holland. Hallborn. There you go. Uh, while the company only lasted for a few years and they only produced a handful of models, their distinctive designs, both, both their cases and their hardware choices, are worthy of being remembered. And just to give you a good example, this is the Hallborn 9100 along with its connected terminals. Oh my god. Gosh, look at that thing. It looks like E.T. the extraterrestrial, or it looks like the computer space arcade. It's just it, with that, that neck and that CRT. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. If you're listening to the audio podcast of this, ver of this show, go watch the video or go read the article along with it so you can see these pictures. They're amazing. Look at that. Look at that. I, 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 I'm flabbergasted. I'm speechless and I have an article in front of me I can read. That distinctive neck just screams 1950s futurism and I love it. All right, let's back, back up a minute. The company was founded in, in Hengelo, a town in the Netherlands near the German border. And this is their first office space. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you right here. This is Hallborn Computers. That's their office. Yeah. Now, and pictured below, uh, pictured here, uh, are the founders of the company. This is uh, Dick Gerdsen on the left and Hans Pollock on the right. And they're surrounded by a bunch of Hallborn Computers and Terminals. Look at those things. Oh my word, they're cool. That that neck that holds up the monitor is just so super neat. I love it. Uh, let, now let's go through their computer models, all of them in chronological order because each one is worth it. Let's start with their first computer, right? The Hallborn 9100 and the accompanying 9120 terminal pictured on the left in this picture below. Okay, so, so here we go. This is the Hallborn 9100. Oh, look at that thing. With the, with the neck coming out of that keyboard, it's just glorious. Just glorious. Uh, note that the 9100 computer computer portion where the CPU drives, etc. were contained is the size of a mini fridge. You see that big mini fridge underneath it? Yeah, that's that's the main computer part, right? Um, with, and the 9120 terminal right? See the terminal? That sits on top of it and it connects into the big computer part. So uh, uh, that, that's the primary computing unit on the floor. Now the specs of this system were as follows. It has a Zilog Z80 CPU at 3.5 megahertz, 72K of RAM. Yeah, 72. Not 64, not 32, not 512. No, 72K of RAM. Expandable up to 220K of RAM. Okay, and eight inch floppy drives, which brings us to the operating system. This is crazy. It was 100% custom and in-house developed. The Hallborn OS was a multi-user system booted entirely from ROM, which allowed multiple Hallborn 9120 terminals to connect to a single Hallborn 9100 computer known as the server. So uh, here, here's... <laughs> Here's, here's a shot of how it kind of worked, right? So you have that big machine, that mini fridge looking machine, and you have all these terminals connected into it. So you have basically a multitasking, multi-user uh, system in the Hallborn computer. And now one extra and optional feature of the 9100, it had a photosensitive light pen, which could be used in the terminals as a pointing device, not a mouse, 
a light pen. You can see a little picture of the light pen sitting with the cord uh, on top of that 9100, 9120 terminal there. Oh man. Now, what did the Hallborn operating system look like in practice? How did it work? How exactly did the light pen work with the included software? Here's where things get crazy. Those are questions that I've personally had for many years. Despite hunting high and low, I have never found so much as a single picture showcasing the Hallborn operating system in any readable way. I found a few really low res versions, but that's it. Old stuff, right? And due to the Hallborn OS only being available in ROM, that's right, it booted off of ROM on the 9100, no known digital archival copy exists. Crazy. In the end, only roughly 200 of these 9,100 units were sold, though that number is debated. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second here. Now, let's talk about the Hallborn 7100. This was a simplified and cheaper version of the 9100 instead of supporting a whole office worth of connected terminals as the 9100 did, because you could build a put a 9100 in your office and have a bunch of those 9120 terminals all over the place, all connected in. The 7100 only supported two connected terminals two users connected at one time. And it looked like the 9100. It acted like the 9100, it just had less. It is unknown how well this model sold. It is assumed that it did not sell well, even compared to the 9100, which again, 200 units, something like that, not good. Now then there was the Hallborn 6100. In 1982, the Hallborn Computer Company had to make some tough decisions. Their Hallborn OS, which booted from ROM, was not proving popular. People just weren't liking it. And the CPM operating system from Gary Kildall's Digital Research, go Gary, over in Pacific Grove, California, was rapidly gaining in popularity. I mean, CPM back then, in the early 80s, it was the de facto PC-compatible-ish sort of operating system of the day. Luckily, the architecture already in use by the Hallborn computers, the Z80, had a native version of CPM. Thus, the lower priced and smaller footprint Hallborn 6100 line was born, the same Z80 CPU, and now it had a maximum of 192K of RAM, slightly less than the 9100, but this time booting the CPM operating system off of a floppy disk. No more booting from ROM, no more in-house developed operating system. This is, this is the Hallborn 6140 with the connected 6110 terminal. See, it's much smaller than that gigantic 9100 mini fridge, right? Much smaller. It's much, much more put on your deskable, right? Uh, but it still retained that, that terminal design that's just, oh my gosh, look at that thing. Look at that beautiful, beautiful machine. That is a unique looking computer. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, now here's a shot of the Hallborn 6100 screen running CPM, right? Because it's CPM and the later the later models were a little bit smaller and cheaper, we, we, we do have plenty of documentation of what those looked like and how those worked. Uh, and here it is running CPM, just beautiful. Now, how many of these machines shipped? Reports put it somewhere in the ballpark of around 100. <laughs> 100 in total. I mean, they were we, we they were a little later machines, so we have more we have more information about them, and they were a little like, less expensive. So we do amazingly we have more surviving, but around 100 total. Though the, the lack of information about the company makes even that fact difficult to confirm. Regardless, it was not exactly selling like hotcakes, right? So then enters the 6500. The final computer designed by Hallborn was the ill-fated 6500. The 6500 Hallborn removed the keyboard from the terminal body, making it a detached keyboard, and filled the base of the terminal with the computer guts, thus eliminating the need for the separate computer housing used in the earlier models. Uh, check out this advertisement from the not yet released 6500, and it's all in Dutch, but what can you do? This is what that sucker looked like. Beautiful, beautiful. And that keyboard you see in the front, it actually pulls away and detaches. Uh, here's a shot of the inside of the 6500 with the top of the case lifted up to show the internals. So this is the inside of the 6500. I'm gonna show, scroll through this again so you can see it. The, again, see that top of the machine with where the floppy disks are located? It lifts up, boom, lifts up and 
exposes all of those guts. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, unfortunately, Hallborn Computers declared bankruptcy in April of 1983 before shipping the 6500. And here is where things become increasingly sad for the company. When Hallborn went bankrupt, investigators determined that only 50 units were sold of the 9100 and 7100 combined, and that the company may have had only may have had over three and a half million guilders in debt. Now, guilders were the currency in use uh, in the Netherlands prior to changing to the euro. And some quick math tells us that 3.5 million guilders would be roughly equal to seven million dollars today. Now, would that 6500 model have been enough to save the company? Who knows? Considering the poor sales up until then and the relatively massive debt when compared to sales, it seems pretty unlikely. In fact, it, it, looks, like, it looks like maybe even the disastrously low sales that we thought it had may not have even been real. We may have only had only there may have only been 50 units out there in the wild. You can see why it's it's hard to preserve these because there just weren't that many. But one thing is for certain, those are some seriously funky and seriously awesome looking machines. So I'm sure glad they tried. Now, if you ever run across a Hallborn, count yourself lucky. These are some of the hardest computers to find nowadays, considering that only a few hundred were ever sold at most. And that's even debatable. You aren't likely to stumble across them at a flea market or eBay. <sighs> but with that, I'm going to leave you with some pictures, some, new, uh, some additional pictures of Hallborn computers in action, because these are just so darn cool looking. Uh, here, just These are obviously promo pictures, but look at this. Sitting in the desk, the pictures of it in the background. But look how great those things look. These are just some great looking machines. Oh, look at this sucker. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's the that's the unit that didn't manage to ship. Those that's the one that didn't manage to ship right there. Oh man, and this is the earlier one, right? This is this is that that middle unit where it had the sl smaller than the mini fridge uh, CPU housing, but still had the terminal and the light pen. You can see the little light pen there. She's sitting at it. Oh my gosh, amazing, absolutely amazing. Hallborn computers, just truly spectacular. Uh, I would, I would, they had so much personality, so much character, so much style, charisma. I would have loved to have seen them continue on. But obviously, whether it's through business problems or competition in the marketplace or just screwing up technical details, the company was not long for this world. Just the same. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right, uh, I want to say thank you to the Lunduk Journal subscribers who make all of these sorts of articles and shows possible. If you go to lunduk.com, you can find links to everything. You can find tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of articles, a lot of computer history articles, a lot of breaking news that gets into stuff that most of the tech news outlets out there are literally too afraid to cover. I know that sounds like hyperbole, but it's true. Uh, so thank you to all of the subscribers for making this possible. You make it possible to do this without advertisers, without marketing, uh, without taking marketing money, without big tech influence in any way. It's all possible because of you. Uh, you're amazing. You are an amazing nerd for helping make this possible. So go to lunduke.locals.com. That's the main Lunduke Journal site. Or if you just go to lunduke.com, you get Link Central, which just gives you a ton of links to get you started on your Lunduke Journal journey. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, man, those computers. Are, hold on. We're going to go back and look at that again. That is a cool looking computer. I do declare. <laughs> End broadcast. <laughs>